priority is to not get dropped. That's the priority for this race. Do not get dropped. I haven't said that in a while in one of my videos. So in my last video, I won a Cat D race with a big old breakaway. I always said very early on in my Zwifting career that if or when I win a race as convincingly as that, then I'll step up to Cat C. I said that about other riders. I was racing that one with a huge lead or breakaway. I never understood the point of racing other riders that you know you can convincingly beat without there being a challenge. Now I'm on the pointy end of that sword and I don't want to leave Cat D. I'm enjoying my winning streak too much to have to go back to being dropped and not being the one doing the dropping. I have now officially won four of my last five Cat D races and I now go into Cat D races thinking I can win it. However, equally, I don't want to be that Cat D racer ruining the fun and chances of other Cat Ds just because I won't give up on that winning feeling. A promise to myself is a promise to myself. I can't be a hypocrite. I have decided to try a Cat C race for the first time time. That's the point of this video. Please note that I've never raced a Cat C race before. Here is a full rundown of my Zwift Power rap sheet from my inception in May last year. No Cat C races to be seen at all. They're all Ds. This race, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be tough, but it should make for a very, very good video. Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today's video is gonna be a tough one. I am gonna try a Cat C race for the first time. This is my first attempt at riding in Cat C. I say riding, it's my first attempt at racing in Cat C. So this is gonna be interesting. So I started racing in Cat D a year ago now. I should also probably point out that I have not been officially promoted or forcibly category restricted to Cat C. 30 seconds to go, I've got a new bike. I unlocked it at level whatever. And I've got new lighter wheels that I unlocked at level 31. See if it makes any difference in Cat C. I'm gonna die. Three, two, one. I am still allowed to race in Cat D, but like many other things in my life, I'm taking it upon myself to step up and run before I can walk. I am the great pretender. I don't think I'm gonna do a lot of talking in this ride. I am hoping to be a Cat C wannabe lurking in the shadows, hoping no one else works out that I have no idea what I'm doing and drops me like a cheat day on a Saturday night. Here we go, my first Cat C race. Settle in, get comfy, open the popcorn. Things are about to get really spicy. Then I accidentally bump a button and change my camera angle. I had Scarlett with me trying to work out how to get it back. Third person. I can take clip off screen. Instead of concentrating on my watts and position in the race, I got distracted trying to get the camera angle back. By the time we fixed it, it was too late. I was massively frustrated that my first attempt at a Cat C race ended in me being dropped due to not knowing how to use the keyboard shortcuts. Newbie error. Even though I've been racing on Zwift for a year, I am still making full-on newbie errors. For anyone that comments in my videos that they appreciate watching it because it's great motivation for newbies, I hope this motivates you. Things do not get easier when you step up. Now, I don't know why I didn't put a sprint in to catch back on. Instead, I full-on raged quit. The first really frustrating race I've had on Zwift, which, you know, let's face it, I've been doing it for over a year. It's the first time I've ever come close to rage quitting, let alone actually going through with it. So I had my first full-on rage quit. 
give me a break guys please don't go at me in the comments i know it's not the thing to be done but i was just done with this race so having already said in my intro about not being a hypocrite and building myself up as a zwifter who walks the walk as well as talking the talk i thought Fuck that and entered back into another cat d race the day after knowing i had to complete this month's zwift racing series i still have the london classic course to race on and decided to race it in cat d based on my first poor experience in cat c now, I didn't record the race on the London Classic course as I haven't had a huge amount of success on London Classic, so wasn't at all expecting a win. The only two clips I have of this race are the ones that the Zwift software actually recorded automatically for me. The first clip is me going for a full-on breakaway. This guy you can see out front now had just gone for it. He'd pushed a break and had won a two-second gap, which I was really happy with, as we started the final lap. I powered through the rest of the lap, forcing a gap of 11 seconds between us and the chasing pack fairly easily. It was a really exciting race and one I'm really annoyed I didn't record. It would have made for a really good video. But I had the last 200 meter sprint. This was now my third first across the line win on Zwift and only a few days after my previous Downtown Dolphin breakaway win. This also felt like a really easy win for me, even with the sprint. Maybe this is the signal to step up to see. So today's video is stage four of this month's Zwift racing series, which is called Bag That Badge. Nope, I decided to give Park Perimeter Reverse one more go in Cat D. Tactic for today, win. Just go for a win. It'll be interesting to see how I fare on this. Look, the thing is with these races, these Zwift Racing Series races, they're a mixed bag. You can get, go in a race and you can have five or six really, really strong high-end Cat Ds, or you can enter this race and it just be, you know, not, not taken away from anyone in this race, but, you know, it could be people that are just out for a good time and aren't particularly competitive. Um, I'm trying to put that as diplomatically as possible. So I'm hoping there's gonna be some challenge in this and it's gonna be a real, real push to the finish. Okay, just under 20K. Never done this route before. If I have, I don't remember it. I've absolutely no idea where the rollers are, where the climbs are. Fast start already, pushing 60K. This course isn't flat. It's got a couple of punchy climbs. So Cat D might still be a challenge, right? I'm just trying to justify it. I start the race and annoyingly, I forget to hit record on my recording software and only remember to do so just before lap two. The good thing is that it's only a two lap race and not a lot happened in lap one. I pretty much just forced the pace and ensured that the uh, lead group was as small as possible. I might try and save the feather for the sprint. So as you can see, there's seven of us in this lead pack. We've dropped everyone else. Everyone else is, you know, well out of this race. They're fighting out for eighth, ninth and tenth. In Cat D, we're pushing 40 kph, which is quite unusual for a Cat D race. But I'm able to sustain this quite comfortably. You know, we're not in the 200 watts range. And this is what I mean about pushing myself. This might be famous last words, but I don't think... I don't think anyone is going to go for a breakaway. I think these guys don't seem to be any strong climbers the one in orange i think is uh comfortable on the climb um and i don't think anyone's going to push the climbs so i've got two options i can either go for a breakaway or hold out for the sprint now i was pushing the pace of the lead group trying to force as many splits as i could one of the biggest things i've learned after a year on zwift racing in cat d is who are the strongest racers in any lead group. I've become really good at this. Unless I go it alone, I have no real reason to push my watts past 2.3 or even 2.4 watts per kg. If I step up, I know that I'm gonna have to go through hell to get a lot closer to three watts per kg to have any kind of fighting chance. That means losing more weight and getting stronger. The others in this lead group, I could tell, were just trying to hold on. I didn't think they were a threat, but this is Cat D and pretty much anything is possible sometimes okay so he's let him do the work he didn't want to draft anymore or pull us give us draft okay heart rate's coming down this is going to be a sprint finish guys 
the other weird thing that I've discovered about Cat D is that it's a real mixed bag. And I mean a real mix up of abilities and skill sets. Some races I enter in Cat D, sometimes some of the riders are there for a workout or to have fun with no real intention to smash their heart rate up through their head. Like my win on Downtown Dolphin in my last video where I won convincingly. When this happens, it's not a challenge anymore. And then there are other races in Cat D where it seems like I've entered a Cat C race and this one is potentially one of those races, especially with the two riders I've already mentioned. I mean, in reality, on hindsight and spoiler, having now raced five Cat C races at the point of making this video, Cat D races are nothing like Cat C races. And having spoken to a multiple of other Cat B and A riders, it's kind of agreed that it's one of the biggest step ups in regards to category promotions. In Cat D, I'm not one of the heaviest in the race, but I am in Cat C. In Cat D, there are complete newbies to Zwift and indoor racing, not so much in Cat C. In Cat D, you get a load of racers coming back from injury and time out of the game, less so in Cat C. Cat D is a real mixed bag. Cat C seems to have its act together. And even though you still get the inexperienced, I'm an example of that, even I, as a newbie to Cat C, I know the dynamics of the game and can have tactics to try and win. You don't really get that in Cat D. I've also noticed in Cat D that I'm now able to recover without worrying about being dropped. I can comfortably sit in at the back of a Cat D front pack, let the others do the work, recover and then go again, even though this is the strategy I've been aiming and hoping for since starting on Zwift. I, I, I will be honest, at this point I am a little bit frustrated we've allowed them to catch. We had a big enough gap on them, four seconds, you know, their race was over, we should have maintained that. But... Um, yeah, it just felt like the others just didn't want to do the work and I'm I'm not going to do the work for them. So we've got just under 3k left to go. Now this is a big old climb here. 8% punchy climb. Someone's using their feather. That's that Fisher guy. Now he's strong on the climb here with his feather. I'm thinking if he goes here, there's a good chance he can sustain that. So again, I push knowing full well that these guys are struggling on the climb. I've got it in me to do this. This is how I know that my DCAT, my time in DCAT is over. Right. I'm pretty much using my sprint matches though. I will be honest. 5%. I'm doing, pushing 500 watts. Happy to catch him. I'm not looking to go past. But that's the big punchy climb. Again, we've dropped everyone. You know, four or five seconds. Everyone's dropped off. And then Gooley is only a second behind. And they do end up catching back on. So again, we're back to the three of us in the lead group with just over 2k left to go. When you're in the lead group, it's good to know who in that lead group are the strongest riders because you can kind of make tactical decisions. If you go for a breakaway, knowing no one's going to come with you, you've got to decide to do it on your own or not go for it. Those are the two options. But if you've got some, some that will try to come with you, then you've got someone that you could possibly work with to make that break stick without having to burn every single match in your in your arsenal. Um, I will say, having raced now a few Cat C races whilst editing this, um, 14 second gap is nothing. Um, it's, it's a big deal in Cat D, but in Cat C, yeah, it's, it's, it's not big at all. When you've got a kilometre left in Cat D, you've got two options. You can either go for it. Now, this guy's quite clever. He's decided to go for it. Now, I saw his orange watts per kg spin up, and I thought he's going for a breakaway, but he's not. What he's trying to do is get, I think, and this is, this is very clever, I think he is trying to get a reaction out of us by trying to make us go past so as he can then use our draft. That's what I think he's done here because he dropped, you know, orange numbers and then completely come off the gas and let us scream past. Now he's increasing his watts per kg again. Orange watts, as you can see, I've gone too early. I'm using watts I don't have. I'm in... You know, I'm pushing this. There goes Gooley. I've used my power up now, my featherweight, to give me, hopefully, a bit of an advantage. But we are on a decline. I've gone too early. It's just... It's just a long way. You know, 200 metres now, after I've been sprinting for 300 metres. I sat down there to let the others come through. Um, just so as I could, hopefully, use some of their draft. And, and, if I can do it, I do actually end up pipping him. 
it doesn't look like it, but when you actually see the screen come up, I end up pipping Fisher, uh, and I get. I went too soon. And I end up getting second place. I went too soon, guys. Wow, that's annoying. Second place for me in Cat D isn't a win. This was a, a Zwift Power win because Gooley, who actually came in first, wasn't on Zwift Power. He had no heart rate monitor. I'm not able to see any of his stats. So this was a Zwift Power win on the back of this race and on the back of my last Cat D race, which was a which was a um, you know resounding win. It was a confident win over a minute breakaway win. I decided to step up to Cat. See. So having said all this, I've now decided to finally take that step up into Cat C where there is no recovery. And as soon as I hit a long roller or, or let alone a climb, I have to enter into the pain zone and pull out a PR five minute effort to just remain not being dropped. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, I'm late getting on this race. Uh, I know I'm not. I'm not late getting on, which makes a change for me. Um, I've got six minutes until this race starts. Hang on, no, I haven't. I've got five minutes. I'm about to enter my first Cat C race. Well, I say my first. The first one didn't start so well. I kind of had some technical issues and then half rage quit. My first rage quit on a Zwift race. Um, but this is my first proper official attempt at a Cat C race. I'm going to die a death. This is gonna be a good video. Okay, right, I got three minutes for a warm up. I'm in the pen. Yeah, I'm pretty nervous for this. Attempting my first Cat C in a full on Zwift Racing Series race, which is gonna be, I mean, they're fast already. Uh, you know, Zwift Series races. But so far with two minutes to go, there's 33 riders already, 34. Already in the pen. I'm gonna try and sort my head out so make sure that I try and stick with the lead pack. So the tactics for this race, I'm going back to how I used to race in Cat D. I haven't raced like this for a while. Priority is to not get dropped. That's the priority for this race. Do not get dropped. I haven't said that in a while in one of my videos. Previously, my videos have always been priority is to win. That's not the priority in this race. <laughs> I need to realign my expectations. The priority is to not get dropped. That's, that's what I'm gonna try and attempt anyway. Whether that happens, we will see. Three, two, one. Okay, this is my race review video of my first Cat C race. And I'm gonna talk you through my, uh, my race in its entirety like I do in all my race review videos. I wanna quickly add that the full race review video is available on my Patreon and join pages. If you fancy giving that a watch, your support is greatly appreciated. I'm not gonna go through each turn and jostle, but that video is available to watch in its entirety if that's something you're interested in, uh, along with a load of other race review videos and exclusive content. So I get off the start line uh, and I'm dropping in excess of 400 watts. Now, the interesting thing, I've done a few Cat C races now. This is my first one. I think I've done three Cat C races. And the interesting thing here is getting off the start line 400 plus watts. This feels fast. There's a guy gone. What's that about? If this was a Cat D race, uh, I would be massively off the front. You know, I would be risking either going a solo at this point or maybe one or two maximum other Cat D riders coming with me. This is mental. Now I will say there's a guy that's just sprinted off the front. He's now three seconds ahead. Um, that would have been me and a Cat D doing 400 plus watts. You just don't need to do that in Cat D, but obviously in Cat C I do. Um, and it's obviously spiked my heart rate massively. Now we're doing 300 watts oh, going, on. going into the first 500 meters. As I've just said there, there's no way I can sustain this. Heart rate is a lot higher than it normally would be at this point. In my head, I'm thinking, I can't sustain this. I just can't sustain this. And I'm hoping, my own, the only thing that I've got going for me is my race experience in Cat D. And in Cat D, even with a crazy fast start, which is normally me causing it, even with a fake crazy fast start, it does calm down after the first one or two K and people settle in. We're on the flats now and we're comfortably pushing. I say comfortably, I'm not comfortable, but everyone around me is comfortably pushing 45, 44 kilometers per hour. 
there is no sign of this of this race pack slowing. This is a complete eye opener for me. You know, in my head, I am screaming. High rates, high. Um, the only good thing about it is I've got the draft. So 220 watts now is keeping me within the draft of everyone else. I'm starting to go to the front slightly, but that's only because it's a slight incline and I am in a high gear or I'm pushing slightly more watts than I probably need to be. So I just drop back a bit, knowing full well that those around me will pass me uh, in, in a blink of an eye if I if I drop the ball here. First of the big rollers, um, it's not really that big, but it is, you know, 5%. So I've got to use matches just to stick with this group. And this is the difference between D and C. D and C, I wouldn't necessarily need to get out of my saddle to climb with D group in C, 100% need to. 100% need to stick with this group. And the only way to do that is to get out the saddle and use my body weight on the pedals to give me just a few extra watts. Um, obviously doing that, my cadence drops and my heart rate spikes, which I really, really don't want. But you know, we're 2.8, 2.9 kilometers into this ride and my heart rate is already in the 160s. You know, I am not gonna be able to sustain this for the next 16 and a half kilometers. I'm back to the point of racing where tactics have gone out the window completely. The only tactic I've got in my head, stay in the draft. And that's a tactic I haven't had to worry about for a very long time. And it reminds me of the early days in Cat D where you know, I'm, I was going through exactly the same, just wanted to stay with the lead pack as best I can. And when I did get dropped eventually, uh, and inevitably, I should say, not eventually, inevitably, in Cat D, when I did get dropped, then the priority was to find someone and then stick in their draft as best I can. So this is the punchy climb that I was talking about, 10%, 10% climb up here. So I've lost my cadence completely. My, my RPM is down in the 50s, which is really, really bad. Um, but my heart rate, I'm just, I'm just, you know, 172 BPM and we're at four kilometers. Uh, I'm just trying to stick with this group. You know, I'm having to put a dig in here to try and catch back on. It's strung out completely. We've, we've turned into an I, uh, a team time trial. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to use what momentum I've got coming out of that roller to try and get back on that. We are on a decline here, three, minus 3%, three minus 4%. Trying to catch back on. I'm trying to get in the draft, which it looks like I'm about to do. And I have managed to latch, I think I've managed to latch back on to this group. And it's good that that uh, rider just hung off the back there because that gave me, and he started to push up now. So that gave me a little bit of uh, uh, an opportunity to catch back onto his draft there. Um, but I'm starting to lose the wheels again. I just need to do one more quick dig just to get into that draft. If I can, minus 4%. So the hill's helping me massively here. Uh, but we have dropped some people off the back now. They've gone, but I've used everything. It looks like we've dropped how many? One, two, three, four riders have dropped off the back. That's a spicy climb. That was a spicy climb. That was a tough one. I'm back in with the lead group, which I'm really happy with, actually. This race um, was a real t test for me. It was a real eye-opener, and I'm really happy to have managed to stick with this lead group so far for as long as I have. Obviously the risk for me is once we get to the top and they go over the top and then on the decline, that's where I lose the draft. So I need to get to the top with them so I've got any chance of being able to get over the top with them and stick in that draft. Now we've got another punchy climb. My heart rate really hasn't recovered. 7%, 8%, down to 6, 5 now, so it's leveling out. But look, they've just shot off the front. It's strung out again. It's turned into a team time trial again. The draft is disappearing. I just don't have it. You know, I need to put a dig now. I need to go for it now. I need to get out the saddle, increase my gears, push to the top. I should have done that five seconds earlier. Now we've been dropped. That's it. Easy as that. As easy as that. It has been a long time. It has been a long time since I've seen that happen. That's the risk. You need to get to the top of the climb so you've got the momentum to get over the top. So I've just skipped forward now because not a lot happens. I'm out on my own, floundering on my own. Um, as you can see there, there is a rider who smelt blood and has now managed to bridge the gap between that previous pack and me. So he has managed to catch me, which more than happy to be in someone's draft because it now means that no one else is going to be able to bridge that gap when, we've, when I'm able to draft a slightly faster rider. So 
yeah, he, uh, my only hope to be able to go for a, a sprint finish or a, a finish of some kind is that I've actually got someone to race now, which is a good thing, which I always appreciate. It is good to practice. It's good to practice a sprint, especially an exhausted sprint after I've done max effort. But yeah, we've now got 400 meters to the finish line. I'm just trying to stick in his draft. I'm trying, I'm trying to resist the urge to go too early. Going too early in Cat D, going early can be good because everyone else is spent and they don't expect you to be able to hold it. Doing that in Cat C, yeah, people can hold it and they're able to use me to surf me in and then just sprint past me. So yeah, look, he's going for it now. So I may, well, he's not going for it. He's just ahead of me. So I may as well try. And he sees me going. And then he just drops red numbers. Cat C, baby. Cat C. Red numbers across the line. Flew past me. Hang on, what did that say? Hang on, I need to see that. Oh, it's okay. It's just someone complaining about sandbaggers being in C. Man, it's in every cat. You want to go into D if you think there are sandbaggers in C. Yeah, so look, 239 watts average, 2.5 watts per kg. Yeah, this was um, this was a tough race, but I'm telling you now, 18th out of 43 uh, races starting i am over the moon of that i was really happy with this race as my first ever cat c race i'm not going to talk about the other one the one where i rage quit because as far as i'm concerned that one didn't happen as i mentioned earlier i've now had five cat c races and i've learned so much from racing in them and i'm going to continue to make videos about my progress on my main youtube channel as well as exclusive content on my patreon and join pages i'm broken hardest race i've had in a long time i'm done broken Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe as that really, really helps my channel and allows me to continue to make videos like this. Please feel free to drop me a comment. I've got a long way to go before I'm winning my first Cat C race. But the good news for anyone that enjoys my Zwift videos, we're back on the grind, baby. Every day, we're hustling. Every day I'm shuffling.